Hello. Welcome to Dying in the Basement. That's what I tell my husband when I'm going to come downstairs to do any kind of dying. Today we're going to dye cotton. I already measured the warp that I'm going to put on my loom and part of it is already spread into the different containers that you see on the table. But before I get back there to show you what I'm doing or demonstrate, I just want to like to go over a few of the items that I use. Since this is cotton or plant fiber, prior to doing this video, I soaked the cotton in a mixture of soda ash fixer and synthropol. Then I rinsed out and shook out, basically took some of the water out so it's not quite as wet as it was. And then what I'm going to be doing when I do the dye, mix the dye, then I add urea, which actually comes in a little form of pebbles. But I mix that ahead of time in a water and mix it in the water, and that's what's in the liquid on the other container. Today I'm going to use three colors. I mix them ahead of time because that makes sure all of the powder in the dye has been dissolved. Otherwise, you'll get lumps of color. This is cold water, which means I'm not going to put it in the microwave. You could, I know some people do that, but I actually, I like to let it soak for about 24 hours prior to rinsing it out. All right, so here I am behind the table getting ready to do some dyeing with you. Obviously putting on my rubber gloves. Occasionally I get a little excited and I want to keep going and my hands end up being blue or purple or green or whatever color I'm working on. So prior to doing this video, I took a tablespoon and I opened up the container and I put a tablespoon of the dye in. I always think it's very interesting that when you see the color, the powder here is kind of a reddish color and the actual product is dark chocolate brown and that's the name of that dye. This particular dye is hunter green. It's also, it was kind of a yellowy, well, it's kind of a yellow green, but it turns out a little bit darker. And the last one is teal. Now in the teal, I've already mixed, I already put a little urea in, but the other two I haven't yet. And this is more of an intuitive way of dyeing. So if you're someone who's very precise in their dyeing, you might just want to close your eyes or maybe you don't want to continue watching. I just like to just go with it. So here I'm going to do a little, what I call a little slurp of urea in these other two. Like I said, I've already done it in the teal. I'm going to make sure this is stirred up again. And the other thing you can see that I really, it doesn't matter to me if a little bit of dye gets into each container. I know some of you are probably cringing right now, but I'm not going to recreate this. I have never recreate exactly the same thing. It's just too boring. So, like I said, I've, I've taken my warp. I'm not quite done yet. I've actually, I do have two warps here. So I'm going to continue spreading this one out into three containers. And this particular warp is going to be for some placemats. So I have two different ones. So when I put it on the loom, there's going to be some shifting of colors, which will be a lot of fun. So here I am, these are already damp, cleaned and dampened, and what I do is I'm just going to take it and I'm going to pour some of this on. And then I take my gloves and squeeze it in. Now if you're also a new weaver and you see I don't have any ties in here, yes that could be a bit of a challenge, but I've been doing it a while and I know it works. And when the yarn is dry, it actually comes out and there's no tangles. So I'm getting that nice. And I also want a little bit of in-between colors. I pick three colors, so then two of them come together and form a, another color. So when I'm finished, we usually end up with five colors. And as you can see, I'm going to turn it around, make sure I get both sides. This is one of my favorite parts of working with yarn. If you are a weaver, this is 3-2 cotton. 
kind of very heavy yarn that you might use if you're a crocheter. I buy it on in uh, cones by the pound. This yarn came from a company called R&M. They're out of Tennessee. And now you see I have some white in between here. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the green on here. Squeeze out a little bit. And then I'm going to have a little bit more of the teal. I'm going to bring it around, put a little bit of teal. What I like about the way I dye, it's kind of a surprise when it's all finished. The most important thing, two things, make sure the dye is thoroughly mixed and make sure that your yarn is totally wet. If not, you'll have some spots that are lighter, maybe white. This is a natural un, uh, unbleached yarn. Another trick is it's less expensive. All right, so now we're going to the chocolate brown. And yes, I have not cleaned my fingers or my gloves in between each one. It's okay. These are placemats. They add character. They're one of a kind. And they're a lot of fun to do. Now once I'm finished with this, and once it's done with the dye, with pouring the dye on, like I said, I have to allow it to sit for 24 hours. Now you can see there's a little bit of color that's still the natural, and I don't mind that. It adds, uh, also adds a little bit of more interest to the end product. So I'm really going to squeeze all of this pretty nicely, nice and hard. I'm going to look to see if there's any area that's really white. I don't mind, again, some of this lighter shade, that's not a problem. Now the colors that I work with, I don't have any background in color theory or anything. I find that it just kind of becomes natural to me. So now we're done with the dyeing. That didn't take very long. And what I'll do is the plastic that we have on this side of the table, I'm going to take it and I'm going to cover up these three containers with the plastic and I'll let it soak ferment, well really ferment because I don't have anything in it to ferment, but it'll soak for 24 hours and then tomorrow I will rinse it. I actually use my washing machine, same one I use for my clothing. I'll put it in the washing machine, fill it up, rinse it out, maybe do it two or three times, and then I'll hang it up outside on my porch to dry. When it's dry, then I will, it'll be ready to be put on the loom. And the plan is that I will maybe by next week, we'll be able to show you how this yarn will be put on the loom. So hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching this short video on how I dye in the basement. Hello, and here I am on my studio porch. I've already hung up part of the warp. I have two different warps that I was dyeing, and I have the one ready. What I did is after I hung it up, then I did replace some of the ties that I had used when I was actually making the warp. And what I'm using are, how do you recycle? The old pantyhose or tights or leotards, cut them up. You can keep using them, they stretch, they're great. So you're gonna see I'm going to take the second warp out of the container. And you can, it's a little dark where I'm working at the moment. It's early, earlier in the day, later in the day, it'll be a little sunnier. So right now, you can see the different colors. They're the brown, the chocolate brown is maybe not as chocolatey as you might think, but that's okay. Like I said, these are placemats, and what's so much fun about dyeing a warp is weaving it. Because as you're weaving, the color changes. So the pattern that's used, maybe it's not as oh, delicate or unique as when you're weaving with a plain color. So there you are. I have my warp ready to dye, or ready to dry, excuse me, it's already been dyed. And we'll let it here probably until tomorrow. It looks like it's a nice day out here in Pennsylvania. And then the next part will be watching me put this on the loom, or at least get it ready for the loom. That's the plan. I'd like to have all that ready so you can see the process. Thanks for watching, and that's the end of Dying in the Basement.